Uh-oh, Allie was missing for days when her husband Orson called the police to report it. Detective Wells arrived at the scene and found her purse buried in the garden. Inside, there was a note that read, It's a sign. You're mine. I redesign your new life. The police had three suspects with unusual names. Orson, her husband, Ryan, her best friend, and Atlas, her brother. Who took Allie? It was Rhyme. Almost all the words in the note rhyme with his name. While driving in a storm, John saw three people standing in the rain at the bus stop. But he only had one seat available in his car. Who gets the ride? His childhood friend, an old lady that looks like she's freezing, or his wife? John asked his childhood friend to drive the old lady to the hospital and then take the car back to his house. And John himself will wait for the bus with his wife. Mark is locked in a 30-foot tall cell with an earthen floor and a window near the ceiling. There's nothing else in his room but a shovel and a bed. The entrance is blocked with concrete. How can he get out? Mark can shovel the soil to the wall underneath the window and climb out. Detective Jones was called one day by Border Control about a suspicious pickup truck. Every day, the vehicle went back and forth between two countries with a large sack in the back of its truck bed. When the detective opened the sack, it was filled with sand. What was the driver smuggling? trucks. A geography teacher vanished on the first day of school. When the police arrived, they suspected four people who claimed to have alibis. The landscaper was mowing the front lawn. The English teacher was giving students a surprise test. The principal was preparing for his welcoming speech. And the coach was meeting new students who wanted to join the football team. Who was lying? The English teacher. Of course! (laughs) Students don't get surprise tests on the first day. Well, maybe not at this school. (laughs) A crazy scientist took 10 people into his lab to check their intelligence. He gave everyone two pills and a glass of water. He told them, one pill is a placebo and the other is poison. Whichever you take, I'll take. But somehow, everyone ended up unconscious after the trial except for the scientist. How did he do it? Both pills were placebo. The poison was in the water. Shane and Mia went to Japan for their honeymoon. Only Shane came back, and Mia's family called the best detective in town. What should be the detective's first move? Inspect Shane's suitcase. Inspect Shane's house. Call the travel agency Shane and Mia used. Call the agency to see how many return tickets Shane had booked. He's a suspect, and he shouldn't know the police are investigating him to avoid losing the evidence. Someone knocked on Amy's hotel room door. When she opened it, she saw a mysterious man. He apologized and said he'd mistaken Amy's room for his. When he left, Amy called the police. Why? Nobody knocks on the door of their own room. This is a technique used by people who want to break into someone's home. A worker was found unconscious near the entrance of an abandoned building. He has no memory of what happened, but seems to have fallen from the building. Detective Marks is assigned to this case, 
and he must figure out whether the worker fell or was pushed. He goes to the first floor, opens the window, and throws out a small rock. He does the same on the second floor and all the way to the top. When the detective comes back down, he's sure the worker was pushed. How does he know? He had to open the windows on all floors to throw out rocks. This was an abandoned building, and someone closed the window right after pushing the worker. James ordered a coffee from his local bakery, put in some sugar, but then noticed a fly in his cup. He told the staff member, and they took back the coffee and brought him a new one. But when he got a sip, he got angry. Why? His new coffee was already sweetened. The staff member only removed the fly. Tom was walking in a snowy park at 10 p.m. when he got attacked from behind. He didn't see who knocked him out, and he immediately went to the police. The detectives questioned four suspects. Adam said he was at a suit fitting for his dinner later. Daniel said he was hosting a party at his place. Susan said she was working out before going to work. And Luke said he went to the park to get some cool photos of flying birds. One of them is lying. Who? It's Luke. It's next to impossible to see birds at night in winter. Right before the final soccer match, the team's goalkeeper went missing. The police arrived and they had three suspects from the rival team. Mike said he was signing autographs for his friends. Jake said he had broken his ankle and he was getting a massage. John was training at the gym before the match. The police immediately knew who did it. It was Jake. You don't get a massage when you break your ankle. A doctor walked into an unconscious patient's ward. There, he saw a nurse buttoning up her shirt. As soon as she noticed him, she exclaimed, It's not what you think! The nurse isn't lying, but why was her shirt unbuttoned in the first place? She got locked out of the changing room and knew that the patient was unconscious. So she went to his ward to change into her uniform. Yeah, I believe her. A group of six friends decided to check out an abandoned house in their neighborhood. When they arrived, Mark, one of the group, warned his friends not to go in. But all of them ignored him and walked in anyway. Mark stayed outside, but his friends never came out. Mm hmm. What did he see that stopped him from going into the house? There were footprints going in, but none coming out. Detective Stevenson is taken by some of his mean supervisors who want to test his intelligence. They put him in a room with two doors. One leads to freedom while the other opens onto a bottomless pit. There are two guards, either responsible for one door. One of them always tells the truth, while the other always lies. Stevenson doesn't know who's the honest one, and he can only ask one question to one of them. What should the question be to save his life? If I ask the security guard next to you which door leads to freedom, what will he say? The honest guard will say that the liar will point to the dangerous door. The liar will point to that one too. No matter who Stevenson asks, he should pick the door neither of them will point at. Melissa is walking down a dark alley when she notices a dark figure following her. She walks into a restaurant and sits at a table. The mysterious figure does the same. Then she yawns and immediately knows she's got a stalker. How?
When she looked up, the mysterious figure was also yawning. It means they had been watching her. The director of a large company was found unconscious in his office. The police showed up, saw the messy office, and realized that a fight had gone down. They went to his secretary and asked to see the list of visitors that day. Immediately, they knew who did it. How? The last visitor was the culprit. During the fight, the wall clock also stopped because it got hit. It showed the exact time the last appointment took place. Sarah wanted to get some money from her brother for a house. She couldn't tell him the truth and asked him for an expensive gift. After a week, her brother gave her a glamorous tiara. Then she went to her second brother, asked for money, but he gave her jewelry. Still, she's got both money and jewelry. How is it possible? She asked for a similar jewelry item and sold one of them. Susie went on a dating website and found three guys that she liked, all with some very impressive backgrounds. But only one of them is telling the truth. Can you guess which one? Shane said he was an astronaut. He went to Mars and enjoyed a beautiful sunset. Chris said he was a scientist and went to the North Pole. He enjoyed being on floating ice and seeing both arctic foxes and penguins. Dylan said he was a pilot, and once he flew his helicopter so fast, he broke the sound barrier. Shane is telling the truth. The sunset on Mars is blue. There are no penguins in the North Pole, and helicopters can't travel faster than the speed of sound. Oh, and yes, we'll also ignore the fact that no one's been to Mars yet. Susie also thinks Shane has beautiful eyes, so who are we to disrupt this love connection? Okay, get ready! Today I'll show you different riddles, and you'll have to decide which girl is behaving least wisely, which is a nicer way of saying she's a dunderhead. You'll have 7 seconds to decide. The riddles may award 1 point, 2 points, or 3 points. So grab a piece of paper and give yourself the points each time you get it right. We'll start with the easiest questions that earn 1 point each. Autumn and Hope are going for a walk with their friends. It's 60 degrees outside. Who is dressed in the worst way? Hope. Autumn can take some of her clothes off, but Hope doesn't have anything to wear in case she feels cold. Ava and Olivia are camping in a forest. Suddenly, they encounter a bear on their trail. Ava stands still, and Olivia starts to run away. Who is in danger? Olivia! The bear might see her as prey and follow, and he's definitely faster. So it's better to keep your cool and slowly move backwards, keeping the eye contact. Haley and Savannah are making sandwiches for lunch. Who did something terribly wrong? Haley. She put rat poison in the sandwich instead of jelly. Delaney is on the road trip and stopped to make a couple of pictures. Lenore is riding a bike to a nearby city. Who isn't being smart? Delaney. She parked her car right under the sign that says parking isn't allowed. Jane and Charlotte are learning how to swim. Jane went to the lake with her little siblings, and Charlotte went to the ocean with her friends. They both jumped in the water alone. Who is in greater danger? Jane. In case she struggles, her little siblings won't be able to pull her out. McKenna and Desiree are late for school, so they're taking a shortcut. 
McKenna takes the way through the woods, and Desiree decides to go across a frozen lake. Who's in danger? Desiree, there are cracks on the lake surface. Ruby and Mary were enjoying their time outside when a storm started. Ruby hid in her car in the open space, and Mary kept swimming in the ocean. Who is not safe? Mary should get out immediately. It's dangerous to touch water during a thunderstorm. It's okay to hide in a hardtop vehicle as Ruby did. Okay, easy questions are over. Next questions will give you two points each. Paige and Riley are going on a date, but they tell their parents they're practicing instead. Paige plays tennis, and Riley plays soccer. Who's the worst conspirator? Riley. She's dressed inappropriately for a soccer game. Unlike Paige, she doesn't have any change of clothes or equipment with her. Quinn and Sandra are working in a garden. Quinn was told to water the flowers, and Sandra should mow the lawn. Who's doing something wrong? Quinn. She was told to water the flowers, but she's watering the trees. Everly and Jasmine drove to a mall. Everly left her belongings in the car, and Jasmine locked her dog there while she's shopping. Who's being more stupid? Jasmine, you shouldn't leave animals or people in a closed car, especially in the hot sun. It's the wrong way to get a hot dog. Mia and Stella wanted to get a tattoo and skip their classes to get home right after school. When they get home, they immediately run into their parents. Who's going to get in trouble? Stella. Her tattoo is right on her wrist, and there's no way her parents won't notice it immediately. Hannah's best friend is teaching her ice skating and Lily is learning to ride a bike with her older brother. After several minutes, they feel like they've got it and ride away from their supervisors very fast. Who's least careful? Lily. Hannah has the railing by her side that she can grab in case she falls. Lily will crash to the ground. Kylie and Abby are bloggers getting ready for a party. Who is missing something? Kylie. She's charging her cell phone, but the cord is unplugged. Melanie and Delilah are walking home from work late in the night. Which of the two isn't being careful? Melanie. Although she's walking in a less creepy place, there are no people around. If something happens, no one will be around to help her. Sophia and Brooke went camping in the forest. Suddenly, they notice a moose moving towards them. Who is in greater danger? Sophia, who is wearing heels and will run slower. Brooke can drop her huge backpack and use it as an obstacle. Kira and Ava want to go to a party, but their parents banned them from leaving the house. Kira decided to sneak out using the attic window, while Ava used the back door. Who won't make it to the party tonight? Ava. Kira is quite risky. But Ava's dad is reading a newspaper in the backyard. Maya and Chloe went for a walk. Maya went to a forest and stopped to take selfies with a friendly squirrel she met. Chloe went hiking and decided to take a selfie on the cliff. Who is in danger?
Maya. The branch above her is about to fall. Maeve and Sarah are cheating on their math test. Who is more likely to be caught? Sarah. Although she's sitting in the back, the teacher's looking right at her. Bella and Ashley came home from a party, which they told their parents would be a study date. Who's going to be grounded till the end of the month? Bella. She'll have a hard time coming up with a logical explanation for the confetti in her hair. Elizabeth and Kate are late for work, so they're driving above the speed limit. Which of them is in greater danger? Kate. She has many objects lying scattered in her car. In case of an accident, they may hit her. Ariana and Serena have to do their house chores before they'll be allowed to go to the birthday party. Who is going to be late? Ariana. The iron isn't plugged in. Since she's distracted with the TV, it might take her a while to notice. And finally, here are the hardest questions that award 3 points each. Jessica and Margot are jaywalking. Jessica is listening to music, and Margot is texting her friend. Who is in greater danger? Jessica. Although they're both behaving poorly, Margot is on a straight road where she can be noticed. Jessica is jaywalking before the road takes a turn. Someone might not have enough time to react and stop. Julia and Nea are taking a vacation to the jungles. Julia got tangled up in lianas. And Nea got stuck in quicksand. Who's in danger? Juliet. She can't get out, and there's a jaguar approaching her. Nea is relatively fine because it's actually difficult to sink in quicksand. Leah and her friend Caleb went camping. Caleb was bitten by a snake, and Leah is sucking the venom out of his leg. Amelia is on the trip as well, and there's a black widow on her neck. Who is in danger? Leah. It's dangerous to suck out the venom. As for Amelia, black widows rarely bite, and the bites are rarely fatal. Becky and Allison are both in a bathtub doing their morning routine. Becky is using the hairdryer. Allison is charging her phone while scrolling through the internet. Who is less clever? Allison. It's dangerous enough to have a socket close to the water, but Allison is charging her phone. Becky is sitting in the empty bathtub. She might be a little weird, but at least she's safe. Evelyn and Grace are on vacation. Evelyn is spending it in a desert, and Grace is in the wilderness. By the end of the day, they get tired and decide to spend the night where they are. Who's making a huge mistake? Evelyn. Night temperature in the desert can fall to 25 degrees Fahrenheit and she'll be freezing. Grace's fire will scare away wild animals. Emma and Avery are planning to go to the movies with their friends tonight. Meanwhile, they're enjoying a hot summer day. Who's not going to make it to the movies? Avery. She's about to cook the meat that has been standing in the sun for a while. In the evening, she'll get food poisoning. Scarlett and Emily are sitting on a beach in a city center. Scarlett is applying makeup, and Emily is texting her friends. Who is more likely to be robbed? Emily. 
Although they're both distracted, at least Scarlet has a mirror in her hands and can see if someone is approaching her. Ella and Madison are driving to their friend's birthday party. Ella is chatting on the phone with her boyfriend, while Madison is applying lipstick. Who is in greater danger? Madison. Although they both shouldn't be distracted while driving, Madison isn't wearing a seatbelt. Now, sum up your points. If you got less than 25 points, you scored below average. Uh, but don't be sad. Check out some of our other riddles to train. If you've got between 26 and 40 points, you have an average score and you're on the right track. If you scored between 41 and 55, you're above average. And if you scored 56 or more, you must be a second Einstein. Uh, relatively speaking. <laughs> the strict professor. A student put his final exam paper into the pile of the other students' papers. The professor told him, I saw you were cheating at the exam. You'll get an automatic fail. Then the student asked him, Do you know who I am? The professor answered, I neither know nor care who you are. You have to be punished for your dishonesty. The student walked away. When the exam scores were announced, he discovered he'd gotten an A. How come? The professor indeed didn't know who the student was. That's why he graded his paper just like anyone else's. The chef's out. The owner of the restaurant, Vegan Paradise, called the police. He was in a panic. Someone has attacked our chef! He was taken to a hospital several minutes ago. Our rivals must have sent someone to ruin my business. When the police officers came to the restaurant, they learned that three people had been in the staff area during the accident. The first cook was cutting onions when the chef was hurt. He told the police his vision had been blurred because of the tears, and he hadn't seen anything. The second cook was peeling shrimps when the accident happened. He said he had been listening to music through his earphones, and he hadn't heard anything. The third person, a waitress, claimed she had been serving lemonade outside. Who's lying? The second cook attacked the chef. Come on, shrimps in a vegan restaurant? Really? Wolf Paradox Three wolves were walking in the snow in a line. One of them says, There are no wolves in front of me. Another says, There's one wolf in front of me and one behind. The third wolf says, There are two wolves in front of me and one behind. In which case is it possible? It's possible only if the third wolf's lying. Puppy mystery Emily had a puppy she loved to the moon and back. But those around her couldn't stand the adorable pooch. Emily's husband hated how much time his wife spent with the dog. Her friend Deborah didn't like that every time she visited Emily, she had fur on her clothes. And the family maid just wasn't a fan of animals. One day, Emily came home and didn't find her puppy. The woman was furious. Her husband told her he had just come back from work and knew nothing about the dog. Her friend got offended. I left my scarf here last evening. I've come to pick it up. The maid claimed she hadn't even come close to the pup because of her allergy. Who knows where the pooch is? There's pet hair all over the floor. Why doesn't the maid have an allergy to it? She's lying. Truth or not? Eric, a police detective, was having lunch in a cafe. At some moment, he went to the bathroom and left his smartphone on the table. When he came back, the phone was gone. The detective saw a man leaving the place and ran after him. Eric stopped him when the man was about to sit in a car. The detective told the man to give him his gadget back. But the man seemed confused. I know nothing about your phone. I just gave my friends a lift to work. And he pointed at two men entering an office building. After hearing this, Eric immediately called the police. Why? The man lied. 
his car was a sports convertible with just two seats. The car wouldn't have fit three men. Who went out? In the middle of the night, Dennis was woken up by a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out. Ah, But they know they aren't allowed to leave after curfew. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth. There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Theft on a train Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Boy, I'm surprised. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet. There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone. And Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up. But now, they covered her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Underwater fire A sailor got a letter from his girlfriend. In this message, she told him she'd cheated on him. The man was so furious, he managed to burn the letter under the water. After doing it, he got arrested. How is it all possible? The man was a sailor on a submarine. A New Year Party Emma was giving a New Year party. Everyone was having the time of their lives. But then, someone snuck into the kitchen and added something to all the drinks. Emma and all her guests got food poisoning. Only three guys were okay. They hadn't been drinking anything, and it looked suspicious. The first said he was into sports and had to stay fresh for his morning run. The second guy blushed but admitted that he liked Emma. He had been waiting for an opportunity to talk to her for the entire evening. And the third guy complained he had been having a stomach ache since the beginning of the party. He didn't want to make it worse by drinking anything. Who poisoned the drinks? It was the second guy. He has shoe covers on. He was wearing them not to leave footprints on the kitchen floor. King's heir An old king has passed away. Two men, the true heir and an imposter, claim to be his long-lost son. Both fit the description. In their 30s, tall, blonde, and with facial features similar to those of the late king. One of the ministers suggests a blood test to identify the true heir. One man immediately agrees, while the other flatly refuses. Surprisingly, the one who has agreed is arrested, while the other man is correctly accepted as the rightful heir. Why? The minister knew the true prince was a hemophiliac. It means his blood doesn't clot properly. That's why a blood test would be fatal for him. Impossible. You are alone in a room, but there's also a thief in the same room. How is it possible? Sorry to break it to you, but you're the thief. Which mom's rich? Look at these beautiful young moms. They both look stylish, but only one of them is loaded. Which one? The second mom's rich. Look attentively at the first woman's baby carriage. There's a sail tag on it. A mysterious door. A man walked into a room and saw three doors. The first one had a sign which read, To the Swamps. On the second door, there was a note, Lion's Den. The third door didn't have any sign, but the man knew for sure where it led. How?
It was the door he had entered through. A missing millionaire. Police got a call from the house of a wealthy man who hadn't come back after going for a jog. When several officers arrived, they questioned the maid, the millionaire's wife, and his driver. The maid said, When Mr. Jones went for a jog, he asked me to prepare his breakfast. I immediately got down to work, but it's been three hours and he hasn't returned yet. The wife was worried too. I saw him in the morning, but he was in a hurry. We just greeted each other and I went to work. The driver told the police he had been waiting for his boss in the car, smoking and checking his social media. Who knows something about the millionaire's disappearance? The maid's lying. If she had cut the apples for breakfast three hours ago, they would have turned brown by now. King's Decision Once, a king asked his advisors, What should I do to a person who will dare to touch my beard? I need to punish this crime somehow. The first advisor said, Put them in prison for three years. The second advisor answered, "Oh, Make them leave the country and tell them to never come back. The third advisor provided an unexpected reply. They should be given sweets. The king thought for a while and agreed with the third advisor. Why? The only one daring enough to touch someone's beard, especially if it belongs to a king, will be a child. Okay, time for more riddles, the parents' edition. There are three categories of questions. Easy, which award 1 point each, average for 2 points, and hard for 3 points. We're going to start with the easy ones. Remember, every correct answer gives you 1 point. Jason and Steven are home alone with their kids. Jason is talking to his mother, and Steven is watching a baseball game on the TV. Who's being negligent? Jason. Although both babies might fall out the window and both dads should watch out, Jason's baby is on the higher floor. Whoops. Mila and Gregor cook dinner for their kids. Which one of them is uh, <clears throat> the most confused? Mila. She accidentally mixed up the plates. She gave the dog her daughter's food and is about to feed her daughter dog food. Yum! Sabrina and her son went to the mountains to spend the day sliding. Adam is barbecuing in the backyard while watching his daughter. Who's not watching their child properly? Sabrina her son is sliding right into a big hole in the ice. Rebecca and Natalie took their kids to the lake. The boys are about to jump from the cliff. Whose child is in danger? Natalie's. There's rocks under the cliff her son is about to jump from. Megan and Rachel were cleaning their kids' rooms. Rachel noticed her son's phone and decided to check it, and Rachel found her daughter's diary. Who's in trouble? Rachel. It's bad to read a child's personal things, but she's also going to be busted because her daughter is about to walk into the room. <laughs> Mary and her son are spending time on the beach. Chris and his children are watching a TV. Which parent is doing something wrong? Mary. It's dangerous for anyone to be in the water during thunderstorms. Now we're moving to harder questions. Every correct answer awards 2 points. Meredith is teaching her daughter to do her makeup. Beverly is teaching her teenager to style her hair. Which mom is doing something wrong?
Beverly. The hair straightener isn't plugged in. Nicole and Diana are spending time with their kids. Nicole is reading to her son, and Diana is watching cartoons with her daughter. Who is not behaving wisely? Nicole. She forgot about the food that she's cooking in the oven, and it's burning. So it's going to be takeout tonight. Bradley and Ryan's sons are blamed for painting a face on a neighbor's fence. Both boys denied doing it, and both fathers believe their sons. Who's been misled? Ryan. His son still has green paint on his hands that he couldn't properly wash off. Jennifer went for a walk with her son, but she got distracted talking on the phone. Mark left his daughter in a closed car while he entered a store to buy garden tools. Who has made a bigger mistake? Mark It's dangerous to leave people or animals in a closed car, especially in the heat, when the car warms up very fast and there's a lack of fresh air inside. Brian is teaching his teen son how to drive. And Nancy is cooking a dinner with her daughter. Who isn't being wise? Brian Nancy's daughter seems to be old enough to cut an apple, especially under supervision. But Brian can't control all of his son's actions in the car. Martha and her son went to the jungle, and she stopped to take some selfies. Peter took his son camping, and he's setting up the tent while his son is trying to light a fire. Who's not being smart? Martha. Her baby is approaching a snake that can be venomous. Melissa and Stephanie are doing chores. Melissa is handling the laundry, and Stephanie is cleaning the kitchen. Who should be more careful? Stephanie. Her daughter put her cell phone in a dishwasher. Tiffany and Michael's sons came back home after a study evening at their friend's house. Neither parents are suspicious. However, someone's son wasn't studying tonight. Who overlooked a party guy? Tiffany. Her son has a lipstick stain on his collar. Jack and Vivian took their kids to school. Now Jack is walking to work, and Vivian is driving to a store. Who forgot something? Jack. He's still wearing his daughter's pink school backpack. Looking good, Jack! Charles and Penelope cook breakfast for their kids. Which parent probably didn't get much sleep the previous night? Penelope. She gave her daughter a raw potato and didn't even peel it. Sandra is doing gardening with her daughter. George is watching his child swimming in a pool. Who's being stupid? George. He fell asleep and left his son in the pool unsupervised. What's more, the boy took off his armbands and can drown. Uh Uh-oh. Elizabeth and John's daughters came home. They said they were doing a group science project, and both parents believed their daughters. Who didn't detect a lie? John. His daughter is wearing a sweater on a hot day. So she could be hiding something. Jessica and Aaron cooked a dinner for their families. Jessica cooked Thai soup, and Aaron made mashed potatoes. 
Who is a bad cook? Jessica. Her daughter poured her soup in a flower pot. Travis didn't let his daughter go to her friend's birthday party and told her to do her homework all day. Christina's son had to spend the day in his bedroom too, instead of going to the movies. When the teenagers came down to dinner at 7 o'clock, which parent didn't notice they're being lied to? Travis. It's raining, and his daughter has wet hair. It means she was outside and not sitting in her bedroom. And finally, the hardest questions for three points each. Dustin is cooking dinner with his daughter. Joseph is mowing the lawn while his child is playing nearby. Who isn't smart? Joseph. Lawnmowers are very dangerous machines and should never be used if there are kids around. Sean is teaching his little son how to chop wood. Camilla is listening to music and washing the dishes while her baby is sleeping upstairs. Who's making a mistake? Camilla. The music is too loud and she won't hear if her son wakes up and cries. Brandon and Daniel are watching their kids playing in the backyard. Who's not being wise? Daniel. His son is playing in the sunshine without a hat on and might get sunstroke. Pamela is getting ready for the meeting with her son's teacher at 12 o'clock. William is driving his son to a birthday party. Who isn't very attentive? Pamela. She must have confused the time. The meeting was at 12 o'clock, but it's already 1.30. Thomas is reading a newspaper while watching his son. Molly is talking on the phone while dinner is cooking in the oven. Who should rethink their actions? Molly. She forgot to turn on the oven. Samantha and Bob are sending their kids on a school field trip. Which of the parents forgot to do something? Bob. Why is he holding his son's lunch? The kid is not eating today. Sum up your points to check your results. If you got 25 points or less, you scored below average. But don't worry, check some of our other riddles to train for the next time. If you got 26 to 45, you have an average result. Keep it up. If you got between 46 to 60 points, you have an above average result and you definitely are a riddles master. And finally, if you have 61 or more, you're a real genius. Or you're on your second or third time watching this video. Come on, fess up.